Hello, sports fans, and welcome to the Kitchen of Angry Jackass Brewery. Well, we're not actually a legitimate brewery. It's really just the kitchen of one beer enthusiast who likes to do home brewing. Name's Jack Suodalnik. I am the founder of the Angry Jackass Media podcast and blog, angryjackassmedia.wix.com slash ang, A-N-G, Jack Media is our website where you can check us out. But today we're not doing the usual political writing stuff. We are doing homebrewing, as it would suggest, doing our first vlog here on YouTube. We are making a stout, and as you can probably hear in the background, it is the dulcet sounds of the latest Florence and the Machine album, How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful. Now this concoction that we are making is called Here Comes the Rapture Stout, and it is named after a friend of mine who I am also a huge fanboy for, Ruby Rapture. She is a cam model, so most of her stuff is not safe for work, but if you're into that kind of thing, you can follow her on Twitter at Ruby Rapture. I will now give you five seconds to get all the shit out about some fanboy making a homebrew for a cam model. One, two... Three, four, five. There you go. Hope you had fun. Let's move the fuck on. If you're going to give me crap, move the fuck along. Now, when it comes to home brewing, we use a couple of different methods here in this house. One of the most popular methods that we have is the Charlie Papazian book, The Joy of Home Brewing, where we have concocted a couple of home brews already. The first was an amber ale that we I call amber donkey piss because we're angry jackass brewing. We have to have as many donkey related puns in our beer names as possible. And then I basically stumbled upon a barley wine. It's really strong for only a one gallon batch and we're gonna try the same method here with this stout. Now, the home brewing method that I have is a two to one ratio, which you don't see an awful lot. You either see a ton of malt or a ton of grain. I like both styles. I'm a fan of German import beers, particularly from Munich, excuse me, and those beers are heavy malt beers. But you cannot deny how tasty a grain beer can be, so. I figure favor the grain just a little bit more and make sure you include some malt. So for every two pounds of grain I use, I use one pound of malt. And because, as Mr. Papazian says, have a beer while you're doing your stuff, I don't have any homebrew that I'm drinking, but I am drinking Bee Nectar Cider's Zombie Killer. It's basically a mead, and it is delicious. So, Bee Nectar Cider Zombie Killer. It's fantastic crap, ladies and gentlemen. So, what I'm doing right now is I have my grains steeping, like tea, basically. That is what Mr. Papazian recommends in this book, and that's what I do. So, I have four pounds of grain in that pot. So I have a pound and a half of Chateau Chocolate Roasted Malt. I'm going to have to assume it's from France. I have a pound and a half of Crisp Crystal Dark 77L Crystal Caramel Malt from England. Now I kind of fucked up, only it's one pound of this, and I got another pound that doesn't have the dark specification, so whatever, we'll see what happens. And then I have a pound of Beiermann Roasted Barley from Germany. The reason why I say Beiermann, and I will refer to the wort as Wort, is that in German languages, the Germanic languages, you don't have wa sounds. Look at the Rammstein song, Ich tu de V. If you see the song, the V is spelled W-I-R. Wilkomen is spelled Welkomen. So, no freaking W sounds in Germanic languages. So we're going to let that steep like tea for a half hour. Then, Munton's Dry Malt Extract, Extra Dark, it's from the UK. I use um, a sparkling amber for the amber and barley wine. We're going to add that after it steeps for a half hour. And then, because I figured like playing around a little bit, traditionally I had been using corn sugar for fermentation, 
I have amber candy sugar from Belgium. So we're going to use half a pound of this for fermentation and whoo! I have been on several beer tours and it was most clearly explained to me at the Southern Tier Brewing Company it, out by Jamestown in, you know, western New York, right along the Pennsylvania border. The more sugar you have in your beer, the more fermentation happens. And the more fermentation that happens, the stronger your beer is. ka Ching, because I like strong beers. I also like tasty strong beers. This is not particularly strong, but at 6%, but it's tasty as hell. And just for shits and giggles, we're going to include a tablespoon of brown sugar. Just, again, for shits and giggles. The math I came up with for this recipe comes once again from Papazian's book. In Papazian's book, he gives a bunch of different recipes. He gives some recipes for malt extract-based brews, pure grain brews, and, well, I thought I would try tweaking it just a little bit based on some stuff I saw on the internet and the math that he has in his book for the beer. It, his particular stout recipe, there's two in the malt extract recipe section, which I based mine off of. One recipe calls for 1.8 pounds of malt and grain per quart. There are four quarts in a gallon. Now, he brews five-gallon batches almost exclusively. I'm brewing one gallon, so I'm tweaking it a bit. So once it steeps, once we add the sugar, once we add the malt, I'm going to add for a boiling hop about... I'm going to try to eyeball it as best I can because I don't have a measuring thing. I'm going to try to put in a fifth of an ounce of crystal hops for boiling. And then, about an hour later, I'm going to do a fifth of an ounce of this Cascade hops, which is from Chenevis, New York. I'm a New York boy, so of course. And then what I do a little bit differently from most homebrew recipes is that the Cascade hops are the finishing hops. You're supposed to put them in for like the last two minutes of the boil and then just pour it right into your fermenter, which for me is a one gallon glass carboy. I like to add them in right at the end, right at the 60 minute mark, excuse me, and as it's cooling, I let it, I let the finishing hops steep for an extra 10 minutes. So I do Technically, I guess, a 70-minute boil, I guess. And then I use Munton's Active, Ewing, Active Brewing Yeast. So we're going to let that sit and ferment for about 10 days. I probably won't get to uh, bottling until, let's see, we are brewing this now on July 9th. I probably won't get to bottling until July 21st. That's an entirely different thing, so when I do that, I'll be sure to do another vlog update. And then we'll let it, you know, mature, carbonate for about a month. And then in a month's time, on our website, angryjackassmedia.wix.com slash angjackmedia, I'll let you guys know how it tastes. So, once again, Jack Suodalnik, Angry Jackass Media Podcast and Blog making Angry Jackass Brewery, unofficial brewery, so I'm not trying to sell anything. We're making Angry Jackass Brewery's Here Comes the Rapture Stout, named after my friend and internet queen, Ruby Rapture. You can follow her on Twitter, at Ruby Rapture. Remember, not safe for work, the majority of what she posts, so be careful. But she's gorgeous, she's funny, you should check her out. And don't ask me to spell out fucking anything for her Twitter handle because it's Ruby Rapture. You should be able to figure it out. And once again, you're listening in the background to Florence and the Machine's latest album, How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful. And I am currently sipping on Bee Nectar Cider Zombie Killer Mead. It's a apple cider with honey and cherry juice. It's quite delicious. Check it out. And yeah, thanks for watching.